Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It is Wednesday, July 8th, 2020, and I am pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Thursday, July 9th. Futures currently are slightly higher for Thursday. Uh, we had a pretty decent uh, end of the session on uh, Wednesday, and it looks to be carrying over a little bit. Both the Dow Jones and NASDAQ show futures up about 0.2%. Uh, of course, a lot can change overnight, but at least for now, it looks like the momentum is uh, looking to carry over. I'm um, going to go over a few things during today's show. Start off with the daily market recap, as I always do. Get into talking technically. Um, but if there's one warning sign, uh, it could have to do with the NASDAQ 100. Of course, that's been our leader. Talk a little bit about that and uh, go over a number of industry group charts, though, that are strengthening. Um, after that, we'll get into momentum sleepers. We've got a number of stocks there, I don't know, maybe 10 or so. Companies that uh, maybe are starting to wake up or have pulled back the levels, maybe to keep an eye on. Uh, then I'll get into earnings spotlight, in addition to uh, one company that reported after hours tonight. Got a couple more coming up tomorrow morning. And then we've also got some companies that today uh, changed their uh, guidance, up their guidance. Um, actually, one came in a little below but uh, three others up in guidance. We'll take a look at those. And then we're gonna wrap up the show today with uh, three you must see. Uh, always like to finish the show off with three you must see. These are three bullish charts, and I think these are three stocks poised to move higher. So that's how we'll wrap the show up. Before we get started, just wanna make sure everyone is aware, you can go over to earningsbeats.com uh, and you can sign up for our Earnings Beats Digest. This is a free newsletter. No credit card required. Simply type in your name, email address, hit the subscribe button. We'll make sure you start getting those first thing on Friday morning. Um, again, no credit card required. These are usually fairly brief articles. I talk a little bit about relative strength, talk about earnings. Uh, the last one I did, um, I actually went into a little bit of a detailed discussion about how I would trade one of the best stocks in the market uh, currently and how you know you can use uh, price support, moving average support and so forth, point out some key areas uh, where you can get involved in a stock and keep uh, your risk fairly low. But uh, again, sign that up there, name, email address, hit that subscribe button, we'll get you, we'll get you going there. Um, do wanna mention at uh, Earnings Beats, we keep these portfolios up here. We try to update them just about every day. This was through Tuesday's close, but you can see our four portfolios. All four of them, by the way, this quarter outperforming the S&P 500, three of them outperforming since inception, the S&P 500, and these top two model portfolio and aggressive portfolio, you can see very, very strong results relative to the S&P 500. The aggressive is 30 percentage points higher over the same period, and the model portfolio in just 19 and a half months is up 114% while the s and is up just 16.89%. Pretty good performance there. If you'd like to check that out and the companies that we have in those portfolios, you can actually join as a trial member. So just click on that join today button there that you see and uh, we can get you started. Uh, there is a $7 30-day trial, but it is fully refundable. So within five to 10 days, we'll refund you the $7. So literally you can check out our service for 30 days at no cost. All right, let's get going here. Uh, so looking at Wednesday, I thought the action was pretty good. Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, we were down earlier in the session, but we did manage to come back up, finished up 177 points. The S&P was up 25. NASDAQ, again, on a relative basis, just powering forward. You can see it, just a quick visual at the chart. You can see how we've broken out here in July above that double top in June. And when you look at the Dow, you look at the S&P, the mid cap, the small cap, none of these have broken above their June highs. So this is clearly the strength of the market right here, the NASDAQ 100. And in my opinion, I've been talking about this for months now, these are your high growth companies. And high, if you can grow your earnings in a market environment that has historically low interest rates, those earnings are extremely valuable. And that's what everyone is coming to grips with now. We're seeing companies like Tesla that have just been shooting up off the charts because not only have they they've been beating estimates, but I believe Wall Street is positioning itself for another beat coming down the road. And so I wouldn't be surprised to see this rally continue. 
I do have a little bit of short-term concern. I'll talk about that in just a bit. But uh, the NASDAQ certainly looking good uh, breaking out so on a relative basis, looking exceptionally good. Then let's look at these sectors because leadership on uh, Wednesday was pretty strong. Technology, consumer discretionary, financials, communication services. These are, our, these are four of our five aggressive groups. The only one not on the list here is industrials. But those four um, are all aggressive groups and among the top five leaders. So not only were we going up on Wednesday, but money was rotating into areas that are pretty important to sustain that advance. Utilities, the lone exception, a defensive group, uh, but it did have a strong day today, up almost 1%. Um, holding on to support, we've actually got a little trend line here, looks to be holding so far, um, and in a trading range. So I think right now the XLU, probably 62 to the upside, maybe down here around the 55 level to the downside. You could go perhaps down to 53. Um, so let's call it 53 to 62 on support. Um, XLC, we want to see this breakout. So we haven't been able to get that yet. Also on the XLY, trying to get a breakout. Technology is already broken out. We're at an all-time high, closed an all-time high on Wednesday. Discretionary and communication services probably need to make this breakout to carry the NASDAQ 100 higher. 10-year treasury yield, let's look at what's going on there. Uh, we were actually up today, but barely, um, less than a basis point. I finished at 0.65%, just sideways consolidating. Be great for the market to see money rotating away from treasuries, which would send the yield higher. But for now, we are just sideways consolidating. Let's move on to talking technically. I mentioned the NASDAQ 100. The fact that I'm a little bit concerned, I want you to look at this chart. So this is a, a three-month hourly chart. And anytime you got a chart that's going up from left to right, that's usually a good sign. Prices just keep going up as we move through time. The last three months, it's been great. But we do run into short-term momentum issues from time to time. And so I think if you look uh, in the past, well, let's just look at where we are now. You can see we moved up and literally right on the high, uh, at about that 10,700 level. You can see that the uh, PPO, the hourly PPO, looked like it was starting to roll over. As it comes back up and came back up here at the end of the day today, you can see that the PPO is much lower. So if we strengthen tomorrow <clears throat> in the morning hours and we're trying to make this breakout, uh, I think we gotta be a little careful because we're gonna be doing it with a negative divergence on the hourly chart. So what does that mean? What happens when we get a negative divergence? Well, I think if you look back, you can see we had a slight negative divergence here. This was back in the middle of June, higher prices. You can see that PPO was lower. We went down, we didn't lose a lot, lost maybe a couple hundred points on the NDX and then moved up one more time. Uh, if we go back again to uh, maybe mid-May, you can see as we kept moving higher here, the PPO rolled over a little bit there, tried to get up one more high, we gapped up and that was it. Came back down through the 50 day, held on to gap support and then we turned back up. But you see how that PPO, the hourly PPO went back to the center line? That's a lot of times what I look for with a negative divergence. Uh, also, second week of May, you can see here, we were trying to push higher, it looks like maybe on the 12th, 13th of May and look at that PPO roll over. Next thing you know, we go through a period of selling. How about back in the middle of April? Look at the higher prices here. And once again, there was another one of these gap ups with a negative divergence, it failed to hold. And next thing you know, we're back down a few hundred points, actually probably four or 450 points here on the NDX. So these drops, you gotta be careful. They could occur at any time. You know, we've been very strong for the past week or so. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we've been strong for the last week or so. So it wouldn't really be a big deal if we were to come back down, say 300, 350, 400 points. Even if we were to get all the way back down here to the 10,200 level, we would still have this series of higher highs and higher lows in play. So I'm not calling for any kind of major pullback, but I think the odds are beginning to favor bears a little bit. And I hate to say that because I do think we're still in this pre-earnings run-up period, but I think we could pull back for a couple of days, two, three days, and then still make another run into earnings. 
So I just think you got to be a little bit cautious as a short-term trader. Longer term, if you're in this buy and hold, I wouldn't be worried about an hourly divergence. I'm talking very short term. As you can see, all of these prior issues that we've had, we rallied right back within a week and we were at new highs again. So I'm not concerned longer term. I'm just talking that for those of you maybe that are short term traders. All right, let's keep moving because I got a bunch of uh, industry groups I want you to take a look at. Check out the renewable energy space. So here is renewable energy moving higher, nice uptrend in play. Look at the relative strength. This is what I really like. Breaking out here in July to about a nine or 10 month relative high. So now we've got renewable energy becoming one of our leaders. That's important because if you wanna trade individual stocks, I like to trade within groups that are leading. I would certainly classify renewable energy as one of those stocks now. Home builders, uh, home construction index, continues to be moving up. I've been writing about this a little bit in uh, recent daily market reports to our members at earningsbeats.com. But this pullback, we held price support, starting to turn back up again. If we can get through 975 on the home construction index, I think that would be very bullish. Can't see it here, but if you actually connect these two relative highs, it looks to me like today we actually pierced that downtrend. I, I see this as a bullish relative wedge. So you've got the down slope here from the highs, you got the lows coming in and it's squeezing into this pie. And I think we broke out of that today. So I like home construction as we move forward. How about uh, home improvements? Home improvements, I see an ascending triangle here. Equal highs coming across, rising lows. Look for this breakout, relative strength. Uh, we were really strong until June. We've been sideways consolidating there on a relative basis, just like we have on an absolute basis. I think home improvement looks good. And if we get the breakout, be ready. Uh, let's see, how about recreational products? Recreational products, I see a very similar type chart. Fairly equal highs, rising lows, relative strength until just recently, we're pulling back. I could see a bounce off this 20 day moving average though. Be careful, uh, especially if you're on the short side. But uh, looking at some individual stocks, they would seem to make a lot more sense if we get this breakout above that 460 area. Specialty finance. Not too many financial areas that I'm looking at right now, but I love what happened here in specialty finance today. We got an absolute breakout and we got a relative breakout. That is a good sign. One of the three you must see that I'm gonna talk about later in the show at the very end comes from specialty finance. So we'll look at that one at the end of the show. Next up, how about financial administration stocks? Again, very, very strong group. Continuing to trend higher, look at the relative strength moving higher. This again is an area I'd be interested in. Now, healthcare has been consolidating for the most part, especially on a relative basis, but medical equipment stocks have been up here challenging the June high. And if we can get a breakout, we've been consolidating now for two, two and a half months, that would be a really strong breakout on the medical equipment group. And after downtrending, while it was consolidating, we had a downtrend for a while, but now that seems to be reversing back to the upside. Watch for a new breakout on the relative strength here. Watch for an absolute breakout up here. Medical equipment, I still like the group. Um, business support services, DJ USIV. Got this double top pulling back. I see a move up, maybe a little bit of a cup with a handle, look at the relative strength. End of June, we pulled back here in the last week, week and a half, but toward the end of June, we broke out to about a 10 month relative high. So another group looking very good. Three more of these I wanna show you. Truckers, been writing about truckers last couple of days in the daily market report as well. Beautiful breakout here. This is one of the few areas of the industrials that I really like. And you can see relative to the S&P, it's been going up even though the XLI, which is the ETF that tracks the industrials as a whole, that has been going down relative to the S&P for quite a while. So truckers coming out of a really poor sector still outperforming the S&P 500. And I think that's uh, pretty important to note. All right, next up, how about the industrial suppliers? Double top, moving up, there's your cup, little handle back to the 20 day. I actually like this group a lot with this pullback today. Uh, maybe watch this relative support area. It's right on it. I wouldn't be surprised to see this group turn higher from here. And then the last one I have for you is semiconductors. 
Semiconductors also big move up, little cup, handle. Relative strength has been awesome. This is a group that continues to perform well. I look for another breakout here on the semiconductors. All right, let's move on to momentum sleepers. So with momentum sleepers, um, you know, I, I think we could probably take a look at them a number of different ways. FTNT was a stock that I actually did report to our members on our daily market report recently. Uh, or actually, no, I think this one I wrote about in my Trading Places blog article. Um, and it would have been sometime probably around June 22nd, 23rd. I don't remember exactly when. But I said I was stalking seven S&P 500 stocks. And FTNT was one of them. And I provided this level of support right here at about 128. FTNT went down and hit it. And now look what it's doing. Six, seven trading days later, it's gone from 128 up above 145 and now looking for a breakout. It actually, I believe, may have closed at a new high, although we still got some candle bodies to negotiate, get through 150. So watch that 150 level. PAVM, this is PAVMED, so healthcare stock. Um, this one absolutely exploded back December to February. Really big move. Look at all that volume coming in. We pulled back and then made another run, and we've just been going sideways here for a little while. We're below the moving averages, so I probably wouldn't be too interested until I see a move through the moving averages, but if you see the volume pick up, that might be a hint. This is in the medical equipment area, which I said, uh, you know, I'm really liking this group. I think we're gonna get a breakout. Well, this is a stock, a smaller stock that could benefit. Watch for that volume to pick up and watch for a move over these two moving averages. Next up, another healthcare, Repro Medical Systems. Once again, trending lower, been consolidating in the medical equipment area. Below these moving averages, I wanna see it at least get through the 20, and I'd like to see the volume pick up. But this is one that was very strong. Stock ran from four and change in March to 13 in April, a month later. Stock basically tripled. So gotta give it a little bit of room to the downside. It's moved its way back down to nine but it could be poised for another run. BYND, this is Beyond Meat, Inc. Uh, pretty good move through this resistance area over here. You can see the breakout in May. Pulled back to the 20, made another breakout here June 8th with some pretty good volume. Pulled back, got a 50-day test, and is now trying to move back to the upside, but simply just going sideways. I think we're gonna see another breakout here. I, I'm looking for Beyond Meat to take out that 160 area. Momenta, um, or Momenta Pharmaceuticals. Um, this is in the biotech area. This was a very, very strong stock versus the biotechs until February. And then we went through the pandemic, we pulled back. We did just recently set a new 52 week relative high to biotechs and biotechs have been on fire, but this stock pulled back. So it hasn't been going up with, with uh, the overall biotech group. And you can see that here in the relative strength, but it's starting to turn back up again. So I think this one's been a relative sleeper for a while. I would not be surprised to see this one begin to gain, regain its leadership. CALX, this is Calix Networks. Uh, nice move up, don't like that candle from uh, Tuesday, but we did hold nice little doji there on the 20 day moving average, which for the most part has been holding for this stock over the last couple of months. So CALX I think looks pretty good. It's been a leader in its group, leader versus the S&P 500, great volume trends. So I think this pullback could be an opportunity here. Uh, how about KOPN? This is Copen, this is a semiconductor. What a move this stock made from March at 20 cents to June 9th or 10th, a buck 60. That's eight times in less than three months. But we've been going sideways, just consolidating. And maybe the stock ends up rolling over, but I've been watching the volume, which is really light. Just seems to me like a buck 10 to a buck 20 is pretty good entry area. We've been drifting back down toward that. Um, it is a smaller company, so it's gonna be obviously more risk, but this is one I think that is just simply consolidating these gains. Could be poised for another breakout. Uh, just a few more here. Let's take a look at ATOM. This is Adam, uh, Adam Mara. Beautiful move up um, in the semiconductor space from $2.50 to $11 in three months. Has pulled back though. 
I think it's got really good support around $8, along with that 50-day moving average at 804. Stock currently at 880, struggling below that 20-day. We might get another test of $8. I'd watch that level pretty closely. I think that could be a pretty uh, key area of support, um, could provide a nice reward to risk entry point if we get down to eight. But I think this is one that could, after this uptrend, simply go into like a cup. So if it goes down to eight, we might see it rally back up toward that 11 area. So good potential there. Obviously, smaller semiconductor, it's going to be a little risky. You got to make sure you're comfortable taking that kind of risk. VERI, this is Veritone. They actually uh, came out after hours, I believe, today, and uh, they've guided their quarter two revenue higher. But before I even saw that news, I was looking at the chart, and this is a stock that had made a huge run. I mean, we're talking about down near $1, and it went to almost 20 in three months, a little over three months. Don't see too many stocks do a 20 bagger in three months. Lots of volume. So there's been some selling. Anybody getting in at 20 when the stock's back down at 13, 14, 12, you're going to panic out. Now, if you buy a stock at 20 and you see two weeks later, you've already lost 40% of your money, you're going to panic. And that's what you see with the volume picking up. But we're now still above the 50-day moving average. I think you've got pretty good price support around this 10 area where we saw big selling and the reversal off of 10. So I think you've got support maybe a couple dollars below and you've got resistance $8 above. So it's a good reward to risk. Um, but they did come out after hours. I'm, I'll pull that up in just a minute and we can take a look at where they are trading after hours, but uh, definitely uh, um, a momentum sleeper, at least prior to the announcement. Last one I wanna mention is FedEx. Uh, I like this one when they reported their earnings. I thought maybe they might drift back down toward this 149 area uh, to test us, you know, where we had broken out above. Haven't, we haven't done that yet. And I'm beginning to think maybe we're not going to, uh, but that would be a great entry point, I think, if, the, if FedEx were to get back down to about 149. But for now, after the gap up with its earnings, I think it's just really kind of turning into a momentum sleeper. Last three or four days, just going sideways. So those are your momentum sleepers. Let's move on to earnings spotlight. The only company, this was one I was really looking forward to uh, seeing what, what happened here because this is a heavily shorted stock. And they came out with their earnings, and I'll be honest, their earnings were not good. They had a loss of $1.96 per share. Market was only expecting a loss of $1.42, so the loss was much greater than expected. Their revenues came in at $1.31 billion. Market was expecting $1.39 billion, so it came in way below revenue estimates. They did not provide guidance. They announced that they're going to be closing 200 stores over the next two years. So they did say that they're in a good position with everything going on with the virus. But still, this was not a very good report. Um, probably uh, shorts licking their chops after uh, the company came up short here. But you can see after hours, it is down more than 6%. Uh, 975 looks like it might even be below that 20 day. So I think tomorrow is going to be a big test for this uptrend. It's fine to gap down a little bit below that 20 day if it does, but I want to see it come right back up above. If it doesn't, then I think we've probably topped for a while. All right, uh, let's see. Other earnings, and these are two that will be coming out tomorrow. So how about we pull up a chart and just take a look at WBA. This is Walgreen Boots Alliance. I'm expecting not much good news here. If we pull this up on a relative basis, first of all, we're not that far off the low we saw back in May. Um, in May, we went below March. So when all when the market was, you know, really getting hit back in March, uh, Walgreens actually was holding up pretty well. But it since went to lower lows, we moved up, but put in a lower high. And now we're just kind of going sideways, not really go, do, doing much when you consider what the S&P 500 has done. So when you look at it, here's the uh, drug retailer group, which had a little bit of a pop here, and you can see Walgreens went up, but since then it's been going sideways. On a relative basis, uh, WBA, not very good relative to its peers, and awful relative to the S&P 500. You can see even today, drug retailers setting a new relative low to the S&P 500. So we do have some issues here. They're going to be reporting tomorrow. I would not be expecting a whole lot. If they do beat, 
you know, maybe they can start an uptrend, but I'd have to see it first. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go in to a, a company like this that's showing such horrible relative performance and hope that they have a good report. I don't think that's a very uh, good way of trying to invest. Helen of Troy. This one, however, I think looks pretty good. So relative to its peers, it's been trending higher for many, many months. Relative to the S&P 500, it's at a 52-week high. This rally has been accompanied for the most part by some very good volume. Its accumulation distribution line is off the charts to the upside. I would actually expect a very good report coming out of this one tomorrow. So Helen of Troy is one that I would expect to see uh, really good action in. Not only a good report, but hopefully a good uh, positive a price reaction as well. All right, I uh, mentioned a couple that had uh, given us some guidance. Well, let's just check these out. So VERI, remember I said this one had some more room to the upside. It is currently up 13% uh, after hours. So we got down close to that 20 day, or excuse me, 50 day moving average and now we're moving higher. Another one that came out after hours, upped their revenue guidance is TPB, Turning Point Brands. They also announced the secondary public offering of 1.8 million shares though. So the stock initially went up, now it's back down, down 5%, um, probably because of that uh, public offering, but it's got really good support just below $24 and it's got some moving averages in that area as well. PTC upped its revenue guidance and is up uh, about 5.7% after hours back to 82.95, so it's gonna get close to that prior high. I would imagine it's gonna make a run for that high, so PTC looking pretty good. HVT, this is Haverty Furniture. They reported their quarter two revenues at 146.8 million. The market was expecting 191.9. Now, I'm not seeing anything here after hours, but I would suspect that we're gonna see a big drop tomorrow based on that miss in revenue. All right, let's move on to the three you must see. I said earlier, these are three companies that I really like. I think that they are beginning to strengthen and I look for higher prices. The first one is Lennar Corp. If we look at it on a relative basis, look at it relative to home construction. Very strong, breaking out to a new high, about to break out to a new high versus the S&P 500. Just broke to a multi-month closing high in terms of absolute price. I think uh, Lennar looks very, really good. Next up, in the same space, we got DR Horton. DR Horton, maybe on a relative basis, doesn't look quite as good, haven't broken out yet versus peers, a little bit worse relative to the S&P 500, but I still think this is a very strong chart moving up, sideways consolidation. Watch for a breakout above 60. If the volume picks up and we get through 60, I think this one could really run. And then the last one I have, I mentioned that specialty, re or excuse me, specialty finance group. And we've got MSCI, MSCI, look at this breakout, look at the volume picking up. Sideways consolidation, making that breakout. I think this is very bullish action here. On a relative basis to specialty finance, it's starting to make a move. Relative to the S&P, it's almost near a breakout. So this is one that I think looks really good. I expect we're gonna see higher prices here. Any kind of a pullback to 350 or even down to that rising 20 day moving average, I think looks good. All right, again, one final uh, word. Go on over to earningsbeats.com. Make sure you sign up for Earnings Beats Digest. It's free. All you need is a name and email, no credit card, or you can try out our paid service. Just click on that Join Today button. Everybody have a great day. Happy trading, and be back next week. Take care. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.